friends, welcome. I'm happy we could be together again here at our online kids church. So why don't you invite your friends and family as we worship our amazing God, listen to our great lesson and enjoy our activity for today. what's going on this month and I will tell you it's party time why because we can invite others to join and have fun honestly it's a great way to show friendship our theme this month is friendship and friendship is using your words and action to show others you care our story and scripture is better together which is taken from Ecclesiastes 4 9 to 12 key question what makes someone a good friend? Everyone wants to be a good friend. But sometimes we might not be the best at showing it. Sometimes we might have to stop and think about putting others first. God can help us choose to be good friends to others. He certainly thinks friendship is important. He made us to have good relationships with each other. It's really important for us to learn how to be a good friend and for us to have friends around us who encourage us and point us in the right direction. We kick off this series in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12, where Solomon wrote, two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Solomon goes on to remind us that like a tree trend cord, we are stronger when we work together as friends. Your closest friends should help you love God and love others every single day. Solomon really knew what makes a good friendship. It's important for us to have friends who we know will always have our back. So take what Solomon said and think about your closest friends. Do you help each other out? Do you stick up to each other? Do you help each other trust God? If you're not sure, maybe ask your friend about God and see what they believe about him. Hey everybody, 
it's Haley here, and I love parties. Don't you just love parties? I love all kinds of parties. <laughs> birthday parties. Happy birthday to me, happy birthday to me, happy birthday dear Haley. Happy birthday to me. And who doesn't love a good block party? Feedback toss. Sorry. Um, I could use some lessons. <laughs> Which is why friendship is so important. Friendship is using your words and actions to show others you care. It's kind of hard to have a party without friends. And honestly, it's hard to even plan a party without friends. You need a tall friend to hang lights. <laughs> you need a friend who can bake. Mmm. And if you've got a friend who's giving beanbag toss lessons, tell them to give me a call. The point is, we need friends, and friends need us. And in today's story, we're gonna talk about what makes a friend a friend. That sounds like fun! It makes me wanna party! Okay, here are four things you can learn from those verses in the book of Ecclesiastes. Number one, friends get more done when they work together, which makes a whole lot of sense. Planning a party goes a lot faster when I've got someone to help me out, which brings me to number two, friends help each other. A true friend doesn't just sit back and watch when it's obvious you need a hand. Little help, little help here. Oh. Ah! Number three, Friends stand up for each other. You better not be messing with one of my friends. I will totally fight you. Unless, you know, you're bigger than me, then I will not fight you. In which case I will totally reprimand you with some carefully planned stern words. Just don't mess with my friends, okay? Uh, and number four, friends help you trust God. You may have a lot of different friends in your life, but a true friend, one that lasts, is the kind that helps you make wise choices. The kind of friend you can talk to about what you believe honestly, and who can help your faith in Jesus grow. So here's the one thing to remember today. Choose your friends carefully. I think you should try to be a friend to everybody, whether it's a friend you choose or not. But when you're deciding who to spend most of your time with, you should choose carefully. Ask yourself, is my friend helpful? Would they stand up for me? Do they help me trust God more? And while you're at it, ask yourself this, am I a helpful friend? Would I stand up for others and help people trust God more? Hmm. When you want to find good friends, one of the best things you can do is to be a good friend. And never forget, that Jesus is your ultimate friend. He is always there for you, no matter what. So, be on the lookout for good friends this week. When you choose wisely, you can't miss. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Ecclesiastes, Chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. The writer of Ecclesiastes tells us two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Suppose either of them falls down, then the one can help the other one up. But suppose a person falls down and doesn't have anyone to help them up. Then feel sorry for that person. One person could be overpowered, but two people can stand up for themselves. And a rope made with three cords isn't easily broken. Let's see how this might play out in someone's life today. Jackson slid into the small school theater and took a seat in the back row and waited for Mr. Ray, the music and arts teacher. It looked like there was only one other kid who showed up to build the set for the fifth grade production of Charlotte's Web, a mall from Mrs. Wiseman's class. Hey. Hi. 
The two boys sat there in awkward silence until Mr. Ray showed up. Ah, my set team. Fantastic. You guys know each other? Kinda. Different classes. Well, you gotta get to spend a lot of time together in the next two weeks as we build this set and get it painted. You guys got any experience with power tools? Jackson could see Amal shift nervously in his seat. No, I just, I don't want to go on stage. Miss Wiseman said I could do this instead. Don't worry, I'll teach you what you need to know. How about you, Jackson? I'm pretty good with a hammer, and I didn't want to wear some silly animal costume. The two boys basically ignored each other as Mr. Ray showed them how to measure each piece of lumber for him to cut, and then he helped them lay out the pieces in a large frame. Now, this'll be one of the wall flats for the backdrop. We'll paint it as part of the barn. Amal, you want a hammer in these nails? Uh, I guess. I'll hold it more like this. Don't worry, you'll get it. I'll do this side. Jackson nailed together the entire flat while Amal still struggled with one corner. Ah, <sighs> what a klutz. But it was a different story the next day when they started to paint. This flat is part of our barn wall. I want you guys to paint a couple of chickens right there. Amal grabbed a brush right away. Oh, do, do you want them to look like real chickens or like cartoons? Nah, just give them your own personal spin. Amal got to work right away creating an entire palette of colors while Jackson was still trying to figure out which brush to pick. Now, I've got to run down to the art room. Amal, why don't you show Jackson how to get started? I don't really... Mr. Ray smiled at them both. He needs a hand. I think you guys will make a great team. Mr. Ray hurried out. Jackson and Amal avoided each other's eyes. <clears throat> well, I'll sketch an outline for the chickens. What do I do? Just, you know, fill it in. <sighs> I'm not really an artist. Jackson dipped his brush randomly in the blue paint and frowned at Amal's outline. Just have fun with it. Jackson swiped the blue brush, outlining a wing. <laughs> I've never seen a blue chicken. Oh. It's great. It'll stand out. Oh, uh, thanks. By the time Mr. Ray returned, Jackson was surprised to discover that he and Amal had already painted five brilliant hued chickens. Mr. Ray grinned. I've never seen a more flamboyant flock. Jackson held out his fist to Amal, and Amal, surprised, gave him a fist bump. Yep, see you boys tomorrow. The next day, Amal showed up with a bruised finger on his left hand. I can still paint with my right. What happened? Mr. Kunkel keeps putting me in as goalie during PE, and then I mess it up, and everyone on the team gets mad at me. Uh, do you stay on your toes? Keep your eye on the ball? No, I just panic when the ball comes at me. Look, I can show you some tips later in the parking lot before my mom comes. Really? That would be great. And you know, Jackson turned out to be a pretty good teacher because Amal managed to get two blocks during PE the next day. And when Jackson showed up to paint sets, stressed out by a math test, Amal grabbed his textbook. Fractions? Uh, I see all these weird numbers and I freeze up. You just have to break it down like this. With Amal's help, Jackson managed to stay calm during his test the next day. And by the middle of the next week, they had completed the entire backdrop for Charlotte's Web. Well done. I knew you two would make a great team. Amal's pretty okay. Jackson's not too terrible. Look, I know you guys are really different from each other, but it's boring if all your friends are just like you. Together, they started gathering wood scraps and wiping off brushes. Seriously, one of the wisest men to ever live pointed this out. Solomon. Solomon? Yep. He's this king in the Bible. He was a builder and an artist and super rich too. But for all the things he had, you know what he valued most? Friendship. He says it like this. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Hmm. On point. Yeah. Amal held out his fist and Jackson tapped it with his own. Maybe Solomon and Mr. Ray were onto something. Here we go, everyone. It's time for Friendship Craft with Miss Cynthia. I am a friend of God. I am a friend of God. He calls me. I am a friend of... Wait, I'm recording? Oh my... Hey friends! Sorry guys, I was just uh, taking in one of my favorite songs there. Well, welcome to craft time! Happy Sunday! 
So, we're starting a new month and it's all about friendship. Oh, I've got to take off my sunglasses. Alright, so for today's craft, boys and girls, we will be sailing away on our friendship sailboat. So for this lovely craft, we will be needing a variety of colored paper, um, a ruler, pencil, some colored markers, and scissors, and a glue stick, all right? So to begin, we're gonna take our ruler and we are gonna begin to draw our bottom part of the boat. Just gonna do a straight line, like a semicircle, right across like that, and then a semicircle all the way around, okay? And then you're going to do the sail part. You're gonna do a half triangle. Just like that. All right, and then just a rectangular long strip of uh, paper as well. So after, when you finish shaping and drawing out your um, pieces, you're going to Cut them out and you will have, ta-da, these. Um, and all I did basically, boys and girls, was just took my Sharpie and I just colored all the way around, decorated it a little bit. And then you are going to write your name on the line. And then friendship, because it's actually a ship, right? All right, then we're gonna take our glue stick and we're gonna take our bottom part of the boat and glue it onto our strip of paper. And then take our sail and apply glue all the way down, only on the left side of the paper and Face it there. Now, boys and girls, we are, of course, talking about friendship. And, you know, for me, what friendship means, or when I think about a, what makes a good friend, is someone who is honest, someone who is trustworthy, someone who will pray with me and encourage me. in the Lord, someone who is fun and exciting, always go out, maybe go buy some candy, um, smoothies, I love smoothies. Um, also, maybe somebody who is funny. So for our bottom line, when choosing friends, it's important that we choose our friends carefully. Friends who are not mean, bullying, but friends who are fun and encouraging, especially who would tell the truth and lead you in the right path. All right, guys, I will see you next time. Bye for now. Oh, so beautifully done. Hats off to you, Miss Cynthia, and our boys and girls. A lot of us had to be away from our friends earlier this year because of the coronavirus. That was really hard, wasn't it? I am sure you still found ways to spend time with your friends, like maybe on the phone or video chat. We can help and support each other when times are hard. The good news is Jesus is a perfect example of a true friend. When Jesus died for our sins, he showed us how much he loves us. Let's talk to God and ask him to help us choose our friends carefully. Father, we thank you today for reminding us in your word that we should have good friends and it's important that we trust each other. And just as the example you gave us, may you help our boys and girls that we will use wisdom as we choose our friends and that in choosing friends, we can still be a friend in loving them and caring for them just like you did. I pray that we have learned something today and that we will put it into practice. We give you thanks now for friendship, for all our friends and for new friends that are coming into our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And remember, one best way to find a good friend is to be a good friend. If your friend is having a bad day, take the time to ask, what's wrong? And really listen. If you know your friend feels overwhelmed at school, 
ask what you can do to help. If your friend is stressed out about something at home, ask if you can pray about it together. It's important to show love to our friends through our words and our actions. Be a friend this week. See you next Sunday. Have a great week. Goodbye.